So in this video, we're gonna cover why RJ Barrett is worth the investment. I don't think you should give up on him, New York. I think that he's a keeper. We're gonna uncover this in this video. So welcome to the channel. I am the Objective Fan. Yes, straight out of Kings County. Uh, you know how it goes down, New York's finest. And we're here to talk about RJ Barrett, right? So he's getting a lot of flack from the Nick Nation and all of the groups. People are down on him. Um, but first off, salute. At the time of this recording, we just got, you know, we just beat Boston, so salute to that. So I figured I'd do a video about RJ like I promised. He's somebody who we shouldn't give up on. He's a quality player. So I'm gonna give you five reasons, right? First, the first reason I wanna touch on is, I wanna touch on his accolades. First off, RJ Barrett is one hell of a player. He's been one hell of a player for the longest now, right? He, he, of course, he's born in Canada, but he moved to the States and went to school in the States, right? He was a five-star recruit and the top recruit in 2018. That's above Zion, Cam, and all the other dudes that was coming out that year, right? He was the Naismith Prep Player of the Year. He was also Gatorade's National Player of the Year as well, right? And this was in his final high school season. Now, he's been the first player since LeBron James to sweep all those awards and win the national championship. So we're talking about a baller. RJ has always been a ball player for the longest. So I'm trying to understand why we try to write this guy off. You know, I think third pick coming in with all these accolades, I'm not saying he's gonna be a super duper star, but at the same time, I think these, these uh, you know, things should be noted. I also wanna talk about his FIBA, right? So check this out. He was named the MVP in the 2017 FIBA under 19 basketball uh, World Cup team, and he won the gold medal. This was the under 19 team. Um, back in 2017. So R.J. Barrett has been a performer, right? And of course, we know what he did when he was in Duke. Shout out to Duke. I am a Duke fan. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for that, but let's go Blue Devils. You know how we rock out. But when he went to Duke, he was a uh, he was the all-freshman team for the ACC. He was on there. And he was all, also on the all-ACC team. Uh, you know, that's for everybody. And he was there with his man Zion Williamson. Right? And he was also a USA Today's Player of the Year. So I, the reason why I'm hitting you with the accolades, and I know some of you don't want to hear that, is because you don't give bad players accolades, right? You you don't you don't get a big contract. You don't get to be become the third pick in the draft, right? If you you're not a ball player, you know. I think that that people you guys are a little too tough on RJ, man. Give him some time. Yes, he's only 22 years old. I know you people don't want, oh my God, he's 22, so what? What does that mean? Listen, Julius Randle took eight years, seven to eight years before he came became an All-Star. Now he's a two-time All-Star. Now I'm not saying we have to necessarily wait that long or we should wait that long, but sometimes it takes time to develop. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. And I think R.J. Barrett, because he was drafted so high in the big market, that people are becoming impatient. So if you're enjoying this video, take the time to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you get all your notifications, and like the video so more Knicks family can find us. I appreciate that. You know what? Even though he has struggled, we still manage to win games. Recently, he hasn't caused us to lose games. That is a major key, always. How are you performing? How does your performance impact winning? And I did a video uh, based breaking down Tibbs' nine-man rotation and exposing why it has, it has been so successful. And, and one of the reasons is you can cover up players and efficiencies. Why? Because with the nine-man rotation, you get a nice, group of guys that have chemistry because they on the floor a lot, right? 
And then you could plug and play guys. So in the fourth quarter, if RJ struggling, hey, you have Emmanuel quickly, just like how Emmanuel quickly just covered for Brunson. And I do think that he has a great case to be the sixth man of the year. I'd probably do a video on that, but at the same time, you can always just throw Brunson and Hart out there if RJ struggling. And even during those games, he's had spurts where he was efficient. Let's pull up the game off, right? Well, first off, let's start with the Boston game. Look at this shooting in the Boston game. He was 10 for 22, three and nine from downtown. He had 11 rebounds, three assists, 29 points. This is the potential, man. This is the Duke Blue Devil RJ Barrett potential. I mean, he's only 22. You gotta give the man some time, man, right? But let's pull up the game log because yes, RJ Barrett has been struggling. This is his average. He's averaging 19 on the year, man. If you round up, he's averaging 20. He's, so he's above his career average of 18. His rebounding is right there. He's a couple of uh, attempts of a point within rebound range. And then his assist is the same. He's pretty, So that means to me that he's just at a point where he's plateauing and he has time to take it to the next level, right? Let's look at the game law. So I'm gonna start from, remember he was out um, against Philly. I think he was ill, right? He was ill at that point. But if you look at his shooting, even before the illness, 13 for 23, all right, this six for 21 is an eyesore. Um, five for 13, eh. You know, we lost the game against the Lakers, so that, that kind of hurt us. Um, but he was 9, 16 for 16 in the loss, right? So this is before that 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 little illness, right? Um, but I wanna I wanna touch on the last 10 games, because you're only as good as your last game. So in the last 10 games, let's look at his shooting. So he was struggling off the injury or the illness, like he was in a couple of games prior to that, right? Inconsistency, yes. John, the John Starks effect, right? So, well, look, we've only lost one game with RJ shooting seven to 16, 43% from um, the field, but he also put, he had three, he shot three for five from threes, right? So his three point percentage in most of these games is pretty impressive, besides the the, the game against Brooklyn and Atlanta where he did, he went, he had an over um, showing, but. Look at his shooting. Six was 15 against Utah. That's that's you know, that's not good a good percentage. But his downtown was two for six, right? Um, but we've been winning games. The reason why we've been winning games is because Tibbs has figured out the code in how to sit guys that aren't performing well. But look at his last five games. In his last five games, he's only had one showing. Where he's under 50 percent that was against the first that was the first one we, we blew boston out by 15 points when rj is not being effective tibbs will take him out the game but if you can see look at his shooting his shooting has improved over the last 10 games it has just look at this look at his uh his field goal percentage right and he had a couple of um bad three-point shooting games but his three-point shooting is definitely improved you know the third reason why rj is definitely worth the investment. The man is egoless. He is the type of guy who can play with other players who are better than him or on his level. He doesn't find himself being intimidated or, you know, like challenged or feeling like he's less than just because Zion Williamson is there. I think that because he's egoless, He's somebody who you can build around because he's not going to hurt your team. I think he only had that one game where he was benched. Uh, I can't remember against who it was. But there was one game where he said he didn't know why he was, you know, he was sad because he was a little bothered, I guess, by that. But besides that, he's a young man. He's egoless. He's somebody who is going to give you a hometown discount. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't trade RJ. I'm not saying that or... Um, I'm also, I don't, I don't think we should trade RJ unless we're getting a player that's better, right? At his position. I mean, like a serious upgrade, like you're getting a Donovan Mitchell type. I will do a, I'm going to do a deep dive on the Donovan Mitchell trade because I think there's a lot of misinterpretation and things that are just not factual. But, um, 
you know, I, I think RJ being egoless makes him the perfect team player and you could plug and play him. And if he's not playing well, you have Josh Harden and Emmanuel quickly. But let me get into the fourth reason. Time and momentum. Like I said, with the recent win against Boston, as you can see here, this was one hell of a game. Double OT, even though they got one OT up there. Let me tell you something. I was going crazy watching this game. I'm like, oh my God, I hope we don't lose. If we go back to the RJ Barry game logs, you see this game here. You know, he's 29 points and things of that nature. If, if I go back to the game log, you can see his shooting has dramatically improved in the last uh, five games, even before the night. The five, he only had one bad shooting night. And he only had one bad shooting night from downtown, which was the last game against Miami, but he still shot eight for 15, and he um, helped the team win the game. So we got to understand what's happening here. Time and momentum going into the playoffs, R.J. Barrett possibly can turn his game around and help us get to that next level. Because let me, let, let's face it. If R.J. Barrett is not performing, as you've seen tonight, if R.J. Barrett does not play well, we will not go far. When R.J. Barrett plays well, we can do things like beat the Celtics. You're going to need R.J. Barrett to play well. Uh, I know you guys don't like R.J. I know you want him traded, but right now he's still with the team. So until he's traded, until he's dealt away, R.J., you, he has to produce. And I'm going with time and momentum because I feel as though he's performing well. And I think that this will continue. So my last reason is, and this is a business, even though we love watching basketball, playing basketball, going to the games, et cetera, et cetera. This is a big business. Let's talk about his reasonable salary. Oh, what do you mean his salary reasonable? RJ Barrett's a bum. First off, you, you can't be a bum. And I don't like that word when people say that for NBA players. Before I, before I go there, I just want to show you RJ Barrett's stats. This is not a bum. You cannot be a bum averaging 19.6 in a league and five rebounds. That's like 20 and five. 25 and three. That's that's reasonable stats. And But people are looking at and saying that he's still playing bad. How is that? Think about that. He's putting up 25 and three, but people are saying that the man is playing bad. No, I think maybe you're just a bad fan, right? But I'm gonna talk about the salary. This is RJ Barry's salary. He's only making $10 million this year. That's nothing. That's chump change, especially to a big market team like the New York Knicks. That's nothing. I don't care about what people have to say about uh, $10 million. He was the third pick in the draft. That's not in the grand scheme of things. $10 million is nothing. But he gave us the big, 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 big deal. Well, I, I feel like it's a discount. The reason why I feel like it's a discount, if I can show you the amount of players He's slated to make $23 million next year. His deal was what, four year, for 100 something, what, maybe 106, and then it had incentives, I think up to 120 million if he hit certain benchmarks, right? But the base of it, I think is 106, right? As you can see here. So he starts making that 23 next year. So RJ Barrett's $23 million would literally make him the 53rd highest player in the league. Right behind his buddy, Julius Randle, who also, our All-Star, gave us a discount. Draymond Green, former All-Star, but he's definitely not an All-Star. Not playing at All-Star level right now. He's making $25 million. Al Horford, same thing, former All-Star, $26 million. I know these guys are at the end of, like, old deals, but at the same time, these guys are, are not on... Uh, RJ's level in terms of payment not number. RJ's getting a rookie extension at 23 million. These guys are getting 25, 26 million towards the tail end of their careers, right? Of course, it's Jalen Brunson. You are that that enough to be said that that's the man right there, Jalen Brunson. So to him, getting 27 million dollars. Tatum got a Tatum. Oh my God! Look at the the Celtics, man. The Celtics. How you get Tatum 28 million dollars? That he's so he'll be the 46th highest paid. Wow, 
But I'm, I'm, I, I'm, we're gonna continue to go down this list because all of these guys are not play, uh, players that's not better than RJ. Gordon Haywood to me is not better than RJ. Thirty million dollars. Bam is a talent. Thirty million. Now you're starting to get into your your big names. But I just wanted to show you the couple of guys that was listed ahead of RJ is not even on, R, on RJ's level. But look at Ben Simmons, $35 million. I'm just gonna point some guys out. Ben Simmons, $35 million. That's a that's not a a great salary based off the investment what a guy's giving you, right? Miles Turner, $35 million, B. He's he's playing well. But who who has the better investment? Would you rather give RJ $23 million? Or would you rather give Miles Turner $35 million? Just something to think about, right? Just something to think about. So I, I brought this list up to show you that there was at least 10 guys that I'm taking RJ over right now that, that makes more money than RJ. So his contract is a reasonable contract. You know, and that's all for this video. I gave you some reasons why RJ Barrett is worth it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully I was able to give you some insight. Um, unless you're getting a, a serious upgrade. If you're getting somebody like uh, Devin Booker, right? I don't know if I would take Andrew Wiggins over RJ in the trade. Um, not to say Wiggins is not a better player. It's just that what the Warriors are going to ask for, I don't think is worth it, right? Jamal Murray coming off injury, I don't know if I would go that way. It's guys up here that I wouldn't trade RJ for, but um, at the same time, I'm not the GM. Let's see. I mean, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, of course, but you're not going to get those guys. Darren Fox already got a point guard. No, I wouldn't do that trade. So just look at the guys behind him. I, Buddy Hill, he doesn't play no defense. Um, Rodden is a backup, even though he's running in the running for six, six man of the year. You know, Michael Conley, Fred Van Fleet, no. None of these guys I would trade RJ for. I mean, Aaron Gordon, I don't know if I would trade RJ for Aaron Gordon because I don't know how Aaron Gordon would fit with Julius Randle. I don't know if that's a good fit. Also, he's probably not going to be up for trade anyway, right? But um, doing what he known, the Vert no rule. So now none of these guys I'm trading RJ for. So you got to give me somebody that's worth it. So that's all for this video. You know, hopefully you had a great time. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. And I hope to see you in, in one of the future videos.